Uh, she goes by the name of Elizabeth Nana. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Karibu sana. I, I like your ring. Is that a ring? Yes, it is. O what is that? <laughs> it has some weed inside, though. Nice. Yeah. Mina kumbi a little Russian. I know. Okoa fashion tips up. We learn okoa gaza has a okoa fashion tips. I'm not a gonga gonga. It's not a gonga gonga. It's very comfortable. It's very comfortable. Looks nice as well. Thank you. Hmm. Mm. You're looking all glam, dolled up. Uh -huh. Thank you for coming through. Anytime. Uh, you got into the industry about two years ago. Your first track was uh, Paro. Mm -hmm. Professionally, that Professionally. is. Professionally. Yes. What does that mean exactly? Um, before I used to do like a bongo type of music. Mm. And then I met Rafiga and Rafiga was like, you can change your music to something else. W why did you do bongo? Uh, you know, when you're new and you, you believe you can write music, you uh. can write anything. Uh. So by then I didn't really know myself. So after I met Traffic, I think I totally knew myself, like what I will do. Yeah. Mm. So when you say you started writing bongo initially, as you were trying to learn yourself as an artist, your influences were mainly bongo musicians? Yes. By then I was still in school and I used to listen to a lot of music. And also I'm a songwriter, so it mm. was so easy to write that type of music. Who was your in biggest influence way back um, Lady JD. Lady JD. Yes. Why her? Um, I really like her because she's so authentic and uh, like all of her songs have messages so I found it very nice to me, yeah. If I may ask her, what attracted you to the music industry? Um, when being a songwriter, mm. I was a songwriter myself, mm. I am a songwriter myself mm. and just being able to talk out to people also and then right now I'm doing um, Afrofusion and it's a mixture of Luo English and Kiswahili for what I do, I'm doing mm. and to find like not most people my age are so much into their languages, yeah. But for me, I find it very nice being able to speak to other people through my language and through my songs. Mm. I, I like the way you're, you're fusing it. The, yeah. That's why it's called the fusion, I guess. <laughs> Thank you. The way you're fusing like a, a local vernacular and English and Swahili yes. to create something so beautiful. Mm -hmm. Your latest track, we're going to talk about that later on. Uh, you also featured Abby. Yes, uh, Abby. <laughs> Abby is a singer songwriter. Uh -huh. Has he had any influence uh, in your music? Uh, if not, uh, who has been helping you as a, an uprising artist on your so, way? Um, Abby, I used to listen to Abby when I was in school, and I really thought he's like this old guy, like because of his voice. He has mm. a very deep voice, and he's very super talented. So um, I met him someday one time when I went to go down for a gig and mm. actually he liked my music but we had never met. So he was like, hey Nana, I really didn't know him mm. but I was following Abby by then. But then I was still young and I really didn't know much about him. So um, one day I was going through some pictures like profile pops up and then I saw him. I was like, I know you from somewhere. Mm. So I inboxed him and he said, yes, yeah, so you have met like twice at go down. And I was shocked and I was like, okay. Mm. Then we talked, we talked, and I told him how I loved his music, and I really thought he was old, and we became friends, mm. and he would teach me one or two in the industry. So we became friends, and I told him, okay, I am having this song, and I would like you to feature in it, and he was like, fine, it's okay. So mm. like, we are both like fans for each other's music, that's mm. what I would say. Fun of a fun. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's nice. Uh, uh, what, uh, any other influences? Uh, what, uh, who has been like teaching you the ropes? Um, what to do, what not to do, yep. public okay. appearances and all that. <laughs> so most of the things I would say I've learned myself, like uh -huh. following other artists, I really love Yemi. I find she's this amazing artist who really love what she does and she's keeping it African. So I try to keep it African and the fact that I'm doing uh, Luo music also. So I really like her. And then I watch a lot of artists performing, female artists performing, which mm. also, I'm a performer, so I have to learn from other artists because no one is perfect, so yeah. Mm. Okay, there was a, uh, I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly. Uh, Paro. Paro. Yes. Baby Gochna. Yes, and then there is and the, and Terrimos. Then, uh, Terrimos. Terrimos. Okay. And then there is a rumba called Duoge Pacho. Come Duoge back Pacho. Home. Come back home. Yeah, it's a collab though. Uh, and then now I have Nisame. And then Nisame. When, yes. when someone looks at uh, your track record with your songs, uh, all of them had Luo influences, yeah, yes. but mm. Nisame is mostly ki Kiswahili. It has Kiswahili, English, and Luo. Like it's all mixed up. It's all mixed up. Yes. So, how would you describe your sound instead of just Afrofusion? I would say it's, it's authentic. authentic. That's what I would say. Yeah. So, you're trying to stay close to the roots? Yes, yes. 
Because you, you find from? like most people are not no longer into their roots. They're so American or mm. so Tanzanian. And so w you find with like... With that regard, how would you describe like the current music scene in Nairobi, in Kenya? Um, some of them are keeping it real, like they're just being them. But some of them fake it. Mm. That's what I would say. <sighs> What would you do? What would you do given the opportunity to change the music industry? Um, what I would believe you do differently? Uh, there are many young upcoming artists who are very good outside there. I think and I believe they should be given more opportunities to be had mm. than always having like the same same people. You know, yeah. So you feel like the veterans are not giving everyone else the opportunities they deserve. Yeah, I would say that because you find like um, a young artist who is very, very good. Actually, there's so many amazing artists I've met that are better than some of us. Like they're even better than me. I would say that. Mm. But they're still there. Like they will do interviews. They they will be given that chance, but not that much. Mm. So at times you ask yourself like, where is the problem or what is not happening? Mm. But if they're given that chance, I think the Kenyan industry will be at a greater level. Like you see like what's happening in other countries, I would say like Tanzania or Nigeria. The younger artists are given that chance and they really do good. Mm. Yeah. So mm. it's like competing competing with the veterans, I would say that. Oh, uh, so you would like a level playing field where everyone else can compete with everyone else. Yes. Because uh, music that would is be all about. Yeah. I think music is all about competition in other countries. Like people are really competing, but you know, when trying to yes, give good uh, yeah, quality yeah. music. Mm -hmm. Everything, video quality, like um, audio quality, yeah. Content-wise as yeah, well. Yeah, content. Yeah. Uh, there's been a big debate with the content, and I'm sure you've had it as an artist yourself. Yes, uh -huh. uh, because you, as an artist, you also sample everyone else who's mm -hmm. on the radio, yeah. on the airwaves. Mm -hmm. What do you have to say about the content? Is is it true that uh, we lack in content? What do you feel about that as a songwriter as well? I think we have content. Like every artist has a different way of bringing out uh, a message to people. Yeah. Mm. Like right now, um, there's some songs I would say that are for the teens, and then there are those who sing for the middle age, and then there are those who sing <laughs> for the wazi. Yeah? But why that distinction <laughs> though? It shouldn't a uh, song be open to everyone? You. Okay, you will find an old person or a middle-aged person really saying like, um, which song? Hey. <laughs> Can we not say any song? Like this song for the youths nowadays, people dance to it. Just sing it. No. <laughs> you, you will find an older person <laughs> saying. Which I find after I say, like, oh, what are those? Our name by Nini. Uh, yeah? Uh. But and then you will find. Um, There's an audience yeah, for Yeah, there it. is an audience for every artist. Uh. You have to try, like, know your audience. Yeah? Mm. And music is, is, uh, is about making money. So you have to know, like, okay, this audience will give me this. Or this, this audience, cash. I just want to have fun. Uh. Or I want to take it professionally. Uh. Or I just want to make money. You, yeah. you know, uh, with that money regard, some artists say when you're after the money, you're selling out. You're not really doing it for your craft anymore. And that's when you start going wrong. So what do you have to say about that? Okay, okay. one thing I know is um, I'll spend on an audio, I'll spend on a video, I'll spend on marketing. So you need returns. You need return. You can't just keep... Okay, when you are starting, you have to let, let those free shows, like people have to know who you are and mm. what you do. But as time goes, as you spend, like you have to get some return. Mm. Apart from the Skizzle tune and other things, like you need shows. You, we all need shows. Yeah? Mm. So I think as an artist, as much as you're doing it, just try to think like, okay, I have to start making money. Mm. Or else you'll be using money and you'll never get in return, which is like you're doing nothing in the industry. Because like in Kenya, we'll get artists from outside to come and perform in our country. But you'll find in other countries, it's so hard to get a Kenyan artist to go there. Going to perform yeah. there. I yeah, is so it uh, our content is not really like breaking through or... There, actually, I, I sometimes don't understand that, mm. yeah? Cause Are we creating we, music just for Kenyans, basically? But at times, we still, <laughs> we still sing in English, but we can't get there. We're we not sing, breaking we through. Sing, yeah, we're not breaking through. So, I don't know, it's, it's us, we, we don't do more work, mm. or... We, sometimes I don't understand how those people outside will really penetrate in our industry and mm. us will but for us it's there. a lot harder yeah i think we, we need to have this debate especially on the east circuit we'll put mm -hmm. a panel one of these fine days yeah uh, but now you as an individual artist uh, what 
what's the hardest hurdle you've had to go through to get to where you are right now uh, with the new track Nisamehe? So one is is normally uh, marketing, like mm. that's like the biggest biggest thing, and then the rotation, yeah. and then um, the fact that I do most of the things myself. I have a team that I work with, a very amazing team. Uh, but you know sometimes it's really good to have a manager but also the managers they have their issues like when is a pata manager but nikumbe mtanaku and akukulia it's like you're, you're doing a lot but you're not getting anything in return mm. but i always believe in hard work you know there's always somewhere who will someone somewhere will really love your music mm. and every artist has to go through steps mm. to make it there so it's just part of it. Yeah, it's it's part of it because okay, if you just make it like once, mm. you'll be like you'll be relaxed like okay, mm. you won't I'm want there, to work you for it. You won't want to work for it. Mm. But as you go step by step, you will always remember I came from somewhere. You'll you know, appreciate somewhere. where you are. Yeah. Mm. I like that. Interesting. What about uh, your favorite part of being an entertainer, of being a musician? Uh favorite part is traveling. Uh, mm. meeting a lot of new people meeting mm. people you only see on TV or you would like to meet yeah mm. nice uh, so as I said earlier Elizabeth Nana that's her name on YouTube make sure you go subscribe 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 like comment do all that fun stuff and make sure you share as well we're about to premiere her new song uh, Nisa Mehe. Yes. In the video, there's Abby, one of our own. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why I was not called for the video, but uh, <laughs> maybe next time. Oh, but, um, so, like most of my songs, I do in Kisumu. Mm -hmm. uh, this one, I've worked with Abby. I've worked with uh, Kialo Johnson Kialo, mm -hmm. and I've worked with a uh, studio from Kisumu, MGF by Jamal Malik. So, and everything is all Kisumu. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, tell us about Nisame before we play it. Uh, so, uh, what is it talking about? Nani <laughs> unataka kusame? <laughs> okay, this is the story behind it. Like, uh, in a relationship, you find, like, ukinikosea, mm. you'll want me to forgive you. Like, most time, you'll play on a woman and you'll want the woman to forgive you. And, like, when you find your girl playing on you, you will not easily forgive her. So, uh, from the, from the, what? From the video, that's the main thing. Like, forgive, you can forgive your lover, yeah? Mm. So, yeah, that's basically what Miss Ame is all about. Is it based on a true story? Not really. It's just writing and being creative. Things happen, you know? <laughs> 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 These are things that happen. So, mm. uh, I like to write my music from things that happen around, like something like uh, when I grow old, someone can still listen to and mm. just be like, this is that song. Yeah, then do a song that I know in future I'll look at myself and be like, was that really me? What was I doing? Mm. Yeah. Nice. Thank you so much for coming through. We Thank were asking you. a question earlier, and uh, guys back at home also keep on answering on Y254 channel and the East Circuit. The question is, how much influence uh, should your parents have on your relationship? When you're dating or when you're married? Well, okay, when you're dating, really none. You can just do the introduction, but when you're married, yeah, maybe twenty percent, not like a hundred percent. Just Thank kidogo, you. yeah. But you know, in ke in in <laughs> most guys are are uh, are mamas' babies, yeah. Like uh. most guys, but so a hundred percent, he will involve the mom, uh. which for us ladies, you're like. So I think the parents should be like twenty percent, mm. yeah. Yes. Sir. <laughs> Ding, ding. First of all, I don't know, <laughs> this young lady to my right. <laughs> Very young, of course. <laughs> no, the 20% is true. If you watch Phoenix the beginning of the show... Phoenix was like none. And, and you were like, yeah, and mankind, yeah, yeah, yeah. And mankind? I don't know about mankind, but uh, man now Nana uh -huh. is saying 20%, you, you're like, but yeah. But if you watch the show in the morning, I clearly <laughs> stated 20%. <laughs> Parents should um, be in your relationship like 20%, you know, to offer advice, to, to guide you and all mm. that. Because this is a path they had also taken. Yeah, and yeah. they're still doing and it. And they're still doing it. And they probably and, uh, know better. You exactly. Know. So 20%. Yeah, the 20% thing, but mm. with a sieve, of course, because not, yes, there are parents, but not every parent is a good parent, sorry to yeah. say. True, true also. So take it with a, what's it called, a grain of sand? I can't remember that saying. With the sieve. Let me I just, just say it in Kikuyu, Mike. <laughs> you know, he wants to say it in I mean, Kikuyu. He's just. It's <laughs> direct translation, like Kikuyu. Unaichunga. So it's a Kichungi. Unaichunga. Can you not have tea somewhere? Take the good, throw away the bad. See? <laughs>
<laughs> so, so guys, uh, keep on answering on uh, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Uh, that's on Y254 and the East Circuit. Until then, Elizabeth Nana Nisamea.